What is going on guys, it's Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Battalion 1944. Now, Battalion 1944 actually launched on Steam around about two weeks ago, and over the last two weeks I've been compiling a list of fixes, optimizations, and other helpful tips and tricks to ensure that we are optimizing your game for the least amount of frame stuttering possible, the lowest amount of input lag, and the highest frame rate possible. Now, the main purpose of this guide is to ensure that you guys are getting a very visually pleasing game, whilst also maintaining the best performance possible. This guide is aimed at pretty much everyone out there, regardless of whether or not you're running a low end system, a medium end system, or an extremely high end system, you should be seeing good results across the board regardless of what sort of hardware you're running. And if you guys are pleased with the results of this video, make sure that you leave them down in the comment section below if you managed to do like a little benchmark beforehand and afterwards, tell them what sort of results you've been getting, and if you do like the video, please go ahead and press that like button as it helps out tremendously, and also share it around with any squad mates, teammates, steam friends, family, anyone like that who might also play Battalion 1944 who could benefit from the fixes with inside of this guide. And for any of you guys who are interested in maybe supporting the channel further, I've also included my Patreon link down in the description down below, and it'll be deeply grateful if you can go and check that out, just go have a read around. It's not entirely needed, but it will also help me as well, just for you guys who might want to support the channel further. Now with all that said and done out of the way, let's get straight into the guide to keep this as fast and as informative as possible. Right, so starting off, what you guys are going to need to go ahead and do, like all my guides, scroll down into the description down below and download the Battalion 1944 FPS pack provided by myself, go into the Dropbox link, press download, and you'll be given a file just like this. Now to open up this file, you're either going to need 7-zip or WinRAR, just go around on Google or go down into the description down below. It will be right near the bottom. There'll be a link for 7-Zip or WinRAR. Download into one of those programs and then you can right click on the file you downloaded and hit extract here. Once you've hit extract here, you'll be given a folder which looks just like this. Then you can double click on the folder. And then within inside of the folder, you will notice there is a game files folder, optimizations folder, and also a credits.txt. Inside of the credits.txt, it's just going to be links for the original download sources of the programs and optimizations and stuff in which I've included. So you can go and credit the original creators of those and also check out their websites if you wish to do so. Now, before we do anything else with inside of this guide, we're actually going to be booting into Battalion itself just by pressing play. And with inside of Battalion itself, we're actually going to be setting our optimized game settings. So just select your region, for me that is Europe, and hit play. Then once you guys are in the game and you're at the main menu, you go ahead and navigate down to the settings icon in the bottom right hand side then go over to the video tab and we're going to be starting off with the in-game resolution i recommend setting this to your native resolution within your monitor so that's usually the max resolution you can select it to Following on from there, we're going to be going down to our display mode. We're going to be setting this to full screen. Now, for any of you guys out there who experience crashes from time to time with inside of the game, you might actually find that borderless mode works best for you. But for the majority of you out there, you want to be going with full screen. V-Sync, we want to make sure that's set to disable. FOV is completely personal preference. You can set that option to whichever you wish to do so. For me, I'm setting it to 105. Frame cap, we're going to be going all the way up to 200. Now, for you guys running on low end or medium end systems, I actually recommend setting the FPS cap to around about what your FPS seems to be sitting at. So on average, after this optimization video, if you're hitting around about 130 FPS solid, I recommend maybe capping your FPS to 120, just to ensure that you're getting a more fluid experience. But for me, I'm going to be capping my FPS all the way up to 200. We're then going to be going down to our texture quality. Now I recommend matching the texture quality to whichever your system is in terms of hardware. So if you're running a low end system, I'd go with low, medium end system, go with medium, and vice versa. So for me, I'm running a pretty high end system here on my gaming machine, but I've already tested this on my low end machine, and I personally run low textures on that. But seeing that I'm filming this video, on my gaming machine, I'm going to be going with high textures. I wouldn't really recommend going with ultra as it's not really necessary, so we're going to be going with high. Anti-aliasing, we're going to be turning all the way down to low. Shadows, we're going to be turning down to low as well. Effects, low. Post-processing, low. Foliage, off. Then scrolling down to resolution quality, I recommend keeping this at 100%, but for you guys on low-end systems, you might actually benefit from turning this down anywhere between 20 and 100%. I wouldn't recommend putting this over 100% no matter what sort of system you're running on, as it would just cause unnecessary input lag. But again, this option here is very good for you guys running on low-end systems. So what I recommend you do after this video, after all the optimizations are complete, go into the training zone, go into the settings and just play around with the resolution quality, turn it down, hit apply. If you're still happy with how the game looks visually, keep going down lower and lower until you find that happy medium of visual quality and performance. So now another very important option with inside of here is actually texture streaming. We want to make sure that is enabled for everyone, no matter what sort of system you're running. And then also going down to the cinematic tab and going to motion blur and turning that off to disabled. Once that's then set, make sure you press the apply button. And then once we're done with the video tab, I also let's go to the gameplay tab found here on the top right hand side. And I like to scroll down until you find the option which says show FPS. I like to turn that to the on position, which is show, and then hit apply. 
And then with that option enabled, you'll actually be able to see an FPS counter with inside of the game, so you won't need to use the Steam one or any other FPS counters in which you might be using to measure performance, and it's rendered locally within the game. Right, so now that we're done with our in-game settings, we can actually go ahead and exit our battalion. Now moving on from there, we're actually going to be going ahead and customizing our INI files with inside of the game files to further optimize the game settings themselves. So to do this, navigate down to Steam, go to Battalion and right click on it, go to the Properties tab, then you want to navigate over to the Local Files tab found in the top of the Properties, then go to Browse Local Files. Then with inside of this folder then comes up, you want to go into the Battalion folder, then go into Configs, Custom, and then you'll find a config inside of here which is custom1.config. Now for you guys who just want to skip this part and get over and done with and do it easier, you can actually go into the game files tab with inside of my FPS pack and you can actually just drag over the custom config if you wish to do so. But if you do that, please do bear in mind that it will reset any key bindings you have, it will also reset your mouse sensitivity, so you'll have to rebind those again with inside of the game, but this will apply all those fixes for you and you won't have to manually edit them. But for any of you guys who want to manually edit the config on which you already have inside of your game, you're going to need a program called Notepad++. A link will be down in the description down below. Just simply download it and install it to your machine and then you can right click on the config and hit edit with notepad++. Then with inside of here, we're then going to be editing a few of the options with inside of here. The first options we're going to be going down and editing is actually dynamic shadows. We're going to be turning this to false. Skylight shadows we're also going to be changing to false. All you simply need to do is highlight where it says true and then just type in false. View distance quality we're going to be changing from 3 all the way down to 1. And also going down to decorative trees and also turning that to false as well. Now on the inside of this menu for you guys running on extremely low end hardware that you can barely run the game, you can also change the resolution quality to below 20% with inside of here. You can set it to values even if you want to go to around about a value of 5 you can do so. But again I recommend setting this to around about 100% for most of you out there. But for you guys running on extremely low end hardware, you can experiment around with that option as well. We then want to be scrolling down to DOF which is depth of field and turning that to false. And then once all of those options are then been set, you can simply navigate up to the top and hit save. Once you're then done editing that config, you can then exit out of Notepad++, or if you guys have already replaced the file in that destination, we are then complete with actually editing around our game files. So you can then exit out of the game files themselves and exit out of the properties tab within Steam. Moving on from there, we're actually going to be applying some optimizations to the game launcher itself. So to do this, right click on Battalion again on Steam, go to Properties, go to Local Files found here at the top, and hit Browse Local Files. Once you guys are in the local files, we're then going to be navigating to the battalion tab once more, then going into binaries this time, win64, and then we're going to be going over to the battalion.exe. We're going to be right clicking on battalion.exe, scrolling down to properties, going to the compatibility tab within side of the properties, and we're then going to be checking the options for override high DPI scaling behavior, we're going to make sure that's checked and set for application, and also disable full screen optimizations. Disabling full screen optimizations can work better on lower end systems. You might find that you might actually lose FPS turning this on on higher end systems, so do experiment with the disable full screen optimizations. But for me, I'm going to be turning both of these options on, and then pressing apply and OK. Once we're then done inside of there, we can then exit out, and we can exit out of the properties tab with inside of Steam. Moving on from there, we're then going to be installing the latest update of Microsoft Visual C++ to ensure that we're getting the best performance with inside of the game. To do this, navigate down to the FPS pack provided, then go into the optimizations folder, and with inside of here, we're going to be installing VC underscore Redist x86 and x64. It's very simple to do this. Simply open up x86 first by double clicking. Then with inside of here, the Microsoft Visual C++ update will then open, and it'll either notify you to repair or install Microsoft Microsoft Visual C++ 2017. So regardless of what it says, whether it says repair or install, go ahead and press it. And then once the installation is complete, it will then notify that the setup has been successful and you must restart your computer before the changes will take effect. We're not going to be restarting yet as we're going to be restarting our PCs after all of the optimizations towards the end of the guide, so simply just press close. Following on from that, we're then going to be repeating the steps for the x64.exe, so double click. Again, it will then notify you that the setup is successful and then just simply hit close. Then proceeding on from that step, we're actually going to be going ahead and applying some audio fixes with inside of Windows to reduce any audio lag or any CPU overhead which might be being caused by post-processing with inside of your audio. So to do this, simply go ahead to the bottom right hand side and go to your speakers, right click and then go to the playback devices. Then with inside of here, you need to then navigate and find which your playback device actually is, which is usually what you're using to listen to this video on. So you'll more than likely be seeing this green bar jumping up and around. If you guys don't know what you're using, it's usually the one with the green tick next to it, which is set to your default device. Once you guys have found which your speakers are on your PC, what you want to go ahead and do is actually right click on them and then go to the properties tab. 
Now before we change anything with inside of here, after you apply these fixes, the audio on this video might actually glitch out and it might stop. If it does, don't panic, it's completely fine and it's completely normal. What you might just need to have to do is close Google Chrome and then open it again. Because if you're adjusting your audio properties whilst listening to something, the audio driver quickly restarts and usually will stop working for any programs which are currently open. So if it does, just simply close out of Google Chrome, load back onto the video and you should be good to go and continue on. So with that being said, we're actually going to be going over to the Enhancements tab with inside of Windows and we're going to be checking the box for Disable All Sound Effects. Once that box has then been checked, we're going to be going over to the Advanced tab and then going over to the default format and setting the drop down menu with inside of here all the way to the top which is 16 bit, 44,100 Hz CD quality. Make sure that is then checked. Once it's then checked, you can then simply go ahead into the bottom right and hit apply and then OK. Now, the reason we've done that is it's actually going to disable all post processing with inside of Windows and all Windows sound enhancements. And for the majority of you guys watching, you will not notice an audible difference with inside of your game or anything with inside of Windows. It will just remove any excess CPU overhead and stop any glitching, especially to do with game files and stuff, depending on what they've been recorded at. It can sometimes cause some stuttering issues, and we do not want that. Following on from that, we're then going to be adjusting our Windows power options for the best performance with inside of the system. So to do this, go to the bottom left hand side and type in power. Then with inside of here, you then want to be clicking on any of the icons with a little battery and cord around it. It might say edit power plan or choose power plan. Click on any of those options and then go to the power options tab found here at the top. Then with inside of here, we're then going to be going to the show additional plans button and hitting the drop down menu and then finding the high performance power plan, selecting it and then hitting change plan settings. These two options here can be set to anything you wish to do so they are completely personal preference and they do not change any of the outcome or performance with inside of this guide to so set them to whichever you wish to do so. What we're interested in doing though is going to the Change Advanced Power Settings tab. Once that's then opened up, we want to be going over to the Hard Disk option. Inside of the Hard Disk option, click on Turn Off Hard Disk After, double click, and go to the setting and set the number of minutes to zero. Then hit Apply. Then scroll all the way down to the Processor Power Management section, go into the drop down, and then go into Minimum Processor State and Maximum Processor State, and ensure they are both set to 100%. If they're not, double click on the value, set it to 100, and then hit Apply and then press OK. Once those settings have then been set, go ahead and hit Save Changes, and you can then exit out of the Windows Power Options. Now, another quick and useful tip for you guys who use Discord to communicate whilst playing the game, whether it be with squad mates or other people in your match, what I recommend doing if you do have Discord open whilst playing is go ahead, go to Discord, go to your profile down in the bottom left-hand side and click on User Settings. Then with inside of here, we're going to be going down to the Appearance tab on the left-hand side. Once you've then clicked on the appearance tab, we then want to scroll all the way down to the bottom until you find an option called hardware acceleration. Go ahead and click on the flicker switch to the off position, it should look just like that. Apply the changes and Discord will then restart. The reason we're doing that is it actually disables hardware acceleration from your GPU and excess processing power to ensure that Discord itself isn't using excess processing power or making Discord look a little bit more fancy and run maybe a little bit more fluidly whilst you're scrolling through menus and stuff like that. It's completely unnecessary and we want to be making sure that all of the resources are going to the game and not the application in which you can use to hear people. This won't have any effect on you being able to hear people or your voice being broadcasted through Discord. It's just simply a visual fix which can help bump performance. Following on from there, we're then going to be going into the FPS pack provided once more and then going into the optimizations folder and then going ahead to the CPU core parking utility .zip, double clicking on the .zip and opening up the CPU core parking setup. Once you've done that, the setup wizard will then open for core parking utility. Simply go ahead and press next. Agree to the license agreement, press next once more, install it to the default location and press next, and then simply hit install. Then make sure that the checkbox for launch CPU core parking 3.exe is selected, and then press finish. You can then exit out the zip file and exit out of the optimizations folder. Now whilst the program is open, you can also navigate down to the credit section with inside of the FPS pack provided and actually get a link to Codabag's website where you can find the latest downloads for the latest version of CPU Core Parking Manager or just send some love over there to the people in which actually created this and go ahead and check out their website. You can also find a more in-depth description as to what this program actually does, but for the basic gist of things, it basically allows Windows to use 100% of the processing power when and if it needs it. Usually with inside of Windows, it parks around about two of your cores in your processor to ensure that some system resources are left over, but we don't actually want that whilst we're playing games. We want Windows to have full access to 100% of the processing power to ensure that we're not getting any FPS stuttering, that we're getting the best FPS possible and the most out of our machine. So to do this, what you're going to want to be doing with inside of Core Parking Manager is going to the System Power Plan drop down menu and selecting High Performance, as that's the power plan we're now running on. We then want to go down to our Core Parking Index and grab the slider and set it all the way up to 100%. We're also going to be doing that for frequency scaling grabbing the slider and dragging it all the way up to 100% again and then pressing apply 
and then pressing OK. You can also see some basic information about the CPU in which you're running if you're curious as to what CPU you're actually running in your system and the CPU speed it's running at. But with the side of there, we're pretty much done using CPU Core Parking Manager. I recommend opening the program around about once a month, or you can actually just go ahead and uninstall it from your machine now, as the edits made with inside of here are actually applied to the registry, so you don't even need to keep the program on your PC if you don't wish to do so. Once that's then done, we can then simply go ahead and exit out. And then moving on from there, we're actually going to be going ahead and decluttering our systems to make sure that we don't have any excess caching files, cookie files, or any excess files which could be slowing down our system and taking up system resources. So to do this, we're going to be starting off by going down into the bottom left-hand side and typing in percent app data percent and then pressing enter. Then within the side of this folder, we're going to be going to the app data folder found here at the top, then going into local, then scrolling all the way down to see a folder called temp or temp double clicking on the folder and inside of here this is where all of the excess windows dump and caching files go so what we're going to be doing inside of here is highlighting every single folder and file with inside of here right clicking and then pressing delete it'll then notify you that the action cannot be completed for all files and folders inside of here that's absolutely fine we're just going to be pressing this checkbox here for do this for all current items and hitting skip once that's then done, the only files and folders remaining inside of this folder are actually the only ones being used by Windows. Everything else was an excess dump file or caching file which isn't being used by your operating system and it's just simply sitting there taking up system resources and storage space. I've heard some wacky stories in the comments down below and I usually ask most people in my guides at this point to post down in the comments how big the file size was and how much they actually managed to remove from this folder. I think the most I've ever heard was around about 50 or 60 gigabytes which is absolutely insane. So if you guys managed to catch that number, please do let me know down in that comment section Below, as some of the stories are absolutely crazy. At this point I'd like to go ahead and go to my recycling bin on my desktop, right click and hit empty and permanently delete those files. And then we're pretty much complete with inside of optimizing Windows itself. So at this point in the video I recommend you guys go ahead and actually restart your machines, come back onto the video, make sure that you're on a fresh boot of Windows and all of the fixes have then been applied and we're in a fresh reboot ready to proceed with the next step. Welcome back to the video guys, you should have now restarted your PCs and we can then proceed to following on with how to boot the game in the best way possible. So to do this, go into the FPS pack provided one last time, go into the optimizations folder and you want to grab the timeresolution.exe program with inside of here and drag that onto your desktop. Once I stand on your desktop, what this program does is it lowers the time resolution and the latency between the operating system, the game files themselves, and the hardware installed with inside of your machine for the lowest latency possible to ensure that they're getting the fastest amount of resources and the most amount of resources possible. This helps reducing any frame lag. It also helps reduce input lag with inside of the game and should keep your FPS to the highest value possible. It's a very useful program and I use this on practically every single game I play, whether that be PUBG, Fortnite, CSGO, Battalion, other games like that, I pretty much use this on every single game. So to use this program, what you guys want to go ahead and do just before you boot into your game, whichever game that might be, you want to double click into time resolution, navigate onto the left hand side and hit maximum. That will give you the lowest time resolution possible with inside of Windows. You can then minimize the program, make sure the program's running. It's extremely lightweight and doesn't really take up any resources. Then proceed to play your game for however long you want to play your game for. Once you've then done you've closed out of your game, go to time resolution again and then just hit the default button which sets it back to the default value and then you can then exit out of time resolution. It's a very simple program to use and I do recommend using it with every game. So see me now that we're done with the optimizations and we're ready to play our game, we're going to be booting into time resolution, hitting the maximum value, minimizing time resolution, going down to Steam, going to Battalion, and pressing play. One last thing I do recommend for any of you guys who have an SSD installed into your machine but you don't have Battalion installed to the SSD, I do highly recommend putting Battalion on your SSD, even if you have a small SSD. If you guys have noticed whenever you boot into Battalion and you select the region in which you wish to play and you hit the play button, it can sometimes take around about two to five minutes for the game to actually boot. That is mainly because you're running the game on a hard drive and there's a slight issue with booting the game. So again, if you want to eliminate that issue and you want the best performance possible, I do recommend installing the game to an SSD. And there you guys have it. That is my ultimate FPS increase guide for Battalion 1944. If you guys have any other tips, tricks or anything like that, questions, queries or suggestions, please do let me know down in that comment section below alongside any results that you guys have had, especially if you guys have actually managed to measure your FPS before the guide and after the guide. Please do let me know in that comment section down below and the hardware in which you're running as it is always fantastic to get a discussion going on and some general overall results down there as well. If you guys want to see other FPS guides for other games, please do check around on the channel, especially for some of the more well-known ones. If I haven't actually covered a game already or you guys want to actually 
you suggest a game for me to cover, please do let me know down in that comment section below as I pretty much read all of the comments out there. If you guys want to also support the channel further for any of you guys who watch my content frequently or like what I do, please do check out that Patreon down below as well as it just helps stabilize my income and keeps me being able to put more time into this. Again, it's not necessary, but if you guys can check that out as well, it would be deeply appreciated. And also subscribe to the channel and feel free to look around. Again, those videos will be down in the description down below for you guys who wish to further your performance with inside of every aspect of your PC to ensure that you're running the most optimized PC possible for every single game out there, not just Battalion. It will teach you how to overclock your GPU in the most safest and efficient ways, teaching you how to fully optimize Windows 10 itself for the best performance within inside of games, other stuff like that, and other FPS guides as well. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I've been Panjano, and I am out.